All right, let's go through this case step by step, just like we did with the previous ones. So looking at these Dorsey Planter DP views of the left index and middle fingers, along with a lateral view of one of the fingers, I immediately notice multiple lucent lesions. These lesions are distributed in the middle and proximal phalanges, as well as in the index finger metacarpal. What stands out here is the non-aggressive nature of the lesions. There's no periosteal reaction, and all the lesions are expansile to some degree. They mostly seem eccentric, which could suggest that they are slowly growing. Now here's where we begin to narrow down the differentials. First off, the lack of periosteal reaction and their benign appearance makes it less likely that these are aggressive or malignant lesions. The lesions don't seem destructive either, which is another indicator that we're probably dealing with a benign process. Next, the expansion of these lesions is quite typical for enchondromas. Enchondromas are the most common benign lesions that can occur in any bone, especially in the small bones of the hands and feet, like in this case. They often contain chondroid matrix, although in the phalanges, they can sometimes be entirely lucent, which we seem to be seeing here. But let's not jump to conclusions just yet. We should also be thinking about other differentials. Since these lesions are multiple, we might be considering something like Ollier's disease, or even Mafuchi's syndrome. Now, Ollier's disease is a condition where you see multiple enchondromas, usually affecting the small tubular bones of the hands and feet. What we're seeing here fits that picture pretty well. Another consideration would be Mafuchi's syndrome, which also presents with multiple enchondromas. However, the key difference here is the association with soft tissue hemangiomas in Mafuchi's. So in Mafuchi's syndrome, we'd expect to see fliboliths or other soft tissue changes, but in this case, I'm not seeing any soft tissue swelling or calcifications that would point towards Mafuchi's syndrome. That strengthens the case for Ollier's disease over Mafuchi's. Now these lesions do raise a concern for possible malignant transformation, especially in long bones. Ollier's disease carries a risk of malignant degeneration into chondrosarcoma. In this case, we're looking at the phalanges, so the risk is lower compared to the long bones, but it's something we'd still keep in mind for any follow-up. One thing that catches my attention is the small defect I see in the cortex near the volar radial border of the middle phalanx. That's where I think there might be a minimally displaced fracture. The lack of soft tissue swelling helps reassure me that it's a minimal or non-complicated fracture, possibly related to a recent trauma. At this point, I'd make sure to correlate these findings with the clinical history. Was there any recent trauma? And of course, given the potential for malignant transformation in cases like Ollier's disease, follow-up imaging and clinical examination will be important. Anticipated questions from examiners? Well, they might ask, about the differential diagnosis between Ollier's disease and Mafuchi's syndrome. The key distinguishing feature, as I mentioned earlier, is the presence of soft tissue hemangiomas in Mafuchi's syndrome. They might also probe into the risk of malignant transformation and how you'd monitor these lesions over time. All right, that wraps up this case. Thanks for sticking with me through this one. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more radiology insights. This is Radiology Made Easy, and I'll see you next time with another case.